Hi, I'm Lisa Sarajian, Senior Analyst within Standard & Poor's Corporate Ratings Department. Welcome to Credit Matters TV. Standard & Poor's recently published a report that explores the impact we expect rising discount rates to have on the post-retirement benefits of chemical companies, or more specifically, the impact on the valuation of the liabilities related to those promised benefits. Here to talk with me today about the key takeaways from that report is Paul Curious, a director from S&P's chemicals team. Paul, thanks for being here today. Good to be here, Lisa. Paul, walk us through the central message or theme of the report you just published. Sure. We're pointing out in the report that companies, chemical companies, are starting to report uh, their 2013 financials, and along with that, are saying that the discount rates they use to value post-retirement benefit liabilities is rising. What that is doing to the post-retirement liabilities is, is, to sh is to shrink it down. Uh, this is good news as far as credit quality is concerned. Uh, this is also what we think an unusual prelude to a period of possible credit challenges when interest rates rise in future. So elaborate, if you will, again, just on the direct link between the rise in discount rates and the impact on credit quality, and then how leverage, for example, declines as rates rise. Okay. Companies value future outflows on post-retirement liabilities, such as pensions, uh, using certain discount rate assumptions. When those discount rates rise, when those assumptions on those discount rates increase, the, the liability value declines. Uh, this is important to Standard & Poor's calculation of adjusted debt because we take a portion of those liabilities, we take the unfunded portion of those liabilities, tax adjusted, and add it to reported debt to arrive at adjusted debt. So when that component of liability shrinks, the unfunded portion presumably shrinks, and our adjusted debt shrinks, which results in an improvement in leverage ratios. Mm -hmm. Okay. And which companies do we think are positioned to benefit? We name several companies where we assume there'll be benefits to leverage. There'll be an, a reduction in leverage and benefits to credit quality. Mm -hmm. uh, we point out companies that have a high ratio of unfunded uh, post-retirement employee benefit liabilities to total adjusted debt. Mm -hmm. And we assume that these are the companies that stand to benefit more. Of course, uh, our ratings involve more than just looking at, at leverage ratios and post-retirement benefits. Mm -hmm. And so we also point out other factors that could either offset or, or further strengthen some of these benefits. And are we viewing this as kind of a one-time impact on leverage? There is certainly uh, an impact at, the, at year end 2013 as companies are reporting their financials, but we assume that uh, there's going to be an inc uh, a future increase in interest rates, and we therefore assume that uh, this is not a one-time impact. There's going to be future a future rise in uh, discount rates and a future uh, reduction in these liabilities. Okay, great. So for the details, people have to read your report. They do. Okay, <laughs> yes. thanks, Paul. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us today. For a more in-depth analysis, please see Paul's commentary on rising discount rates and the impact on leverage levels for U.S. chemical companies. For S&P's Credit Matters TV, that's it for now.